Tyson. How are you? I'm good. Welcome to episode 122 of Nick Tyson Video Tape. We are on to our third episode of our uh, Christmas movie specials. That's true. Uh, very excited this week to be talking about the uh, not quite Christmas movie, <laughs> Reindeer Games. Everyone loves this movie. Do everyone they? owns this movie. Do they? Oh, Every, do you know everyone, what? This is a swordfish. This is one of those movies that you go is, to yeah, everyone's DVD shelf and it's just and they have, in there. No, I think Swordfish was was a lot uh, – people like had that a lot more, but Reindeer Games, everyone's like, oh, yeah, I've seen that. What did you think of it? I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And, well, Nick, we are uh, via satellite tonight as well. We, we are. Uh, we are doing the Skype thing weird. again a few suburbs away. So, um, yeah, if we, do, if we do sound a little bit strange, that is why. That is why. We did discover tonight that our Skype setup may have been a bit of a fraud. <laughs> My mic is a prop mic and the Mac turns is what's out, picking me up. Yeah, it turns me? out the whole setup we had going, we may have to rethink the way we do this, I think. Um, oh, I feel like a shambles. I feel false. I feel like a false podcast. You are a false podcast. If, 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 if that's a thing. Uh, but Nick, why don't you tell the people where they can find our show? Well, sure. Well, thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, over this uh, Christmas time, if, if you do celebrate Christmas, that is. Um, if you don't, happy Hanukkah. That's in, I think, a week. Um, apart from that, uh, what, what was I saying? Where can you find that show? <laughs> Get your shit together, man. Come on. Sorry. 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 <laughs> um, uh, you can find us on Apple Podcasts. You can find us anywhere that you find regular podcasts. Um, and it? if you do, uh, rate, review, subscribe, all of those things, like it a lot, and and we'll love you heaps. Other than that, we're all on the socials, which is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We do have a YouTube channel, and we would like you to follow us on Letterbox because we really like Letterbox. We do, and um, it's such a it's such a good app to use for, for, for people who like film. Um, yes, so you can follow. I say, even though they've started using ad based uh, content, that's okay. It's pretty that's cheap okay. to become a pro member and skip the ads altogether. It is, yeah. Still, it's still a I'm good a pro, app. It's I'm okay. Pro, yeah, it's still a good app. I'm, I'm a pro member, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't get those ads. I saw that update, though, and I was like, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Um, they're not too, <laughs> it's, they're, look, they're not too intrusive, I will say, but yeah, yeah I, 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 it's made me want to definitely upgrade. Uh, Upgrade. Pretty soon. That's good. It's worked on you then. It's worked that on is. you. Um, I'll just add as well that as of this week, you can find us on Spotify as well. Oh. So, if Spotify is the place where you happen to uh, listen to your podcasts, you can or grab Or listen to music. Well, I mean, I would assume most people listen to music on there. But if, yeah, if you do happen to mm. like doing your podcasts on Spotify, you can now find us there as well. Just search Nick Tyson Videotape and follow us on Spotify. That would be awesome. Lovely. I actually had a uh, person at work say that, you know how Spotify does their top uh, 100 or top things you listen to of 2019? Right. Uh, we at Nick Tyson Videotape ranked five in his list, number five in his list. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's nice. How is, hang on, on Spotify? On Spotify, yep. We weren't on Spotify till like a week ago. What am I thinking of then? I don't know. Maybe we were there and no. That would be very You were strange. ranked number five, yeah. Okay. Okay. Weird. I don't understand the technology. <laughs> I just do what hey, I'm told. Thank, thanks for listening. <laughs> anyway, however you listen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Hey, Nick. Um, yeah, it's nice. In lieu of there being not really any trailers worth talking about, um, we, yeah. seem to, we seem to have it like, man, this happens. We get these great weeks and then it's like, oh, nothing? Nothing <laughs> at all. There's nothing. Like literally nothing. Um, and seeing as I didn't really want to talk about, um, I don't know, the second mm. Top Gun trailer because we already did have a chat. That's true. I thought it might be fun. Why don't we little, do a little bit of news? Yeah. Um, and talk about... What, what are we talking? Well, the Golden Globe nominations were announced. Oh. Uh, I think it was actually while we were we were recording last week, I think it was that evening perhaps, that the uh, okay. nominations be, uh, came out. I stayed up late and watched the stream as I always do. Oh, um, lovely. Now, we're not going to go through all of them. Um, no. But I just thought we'd go through maybe the big categories and see if we had any opinions. I have yet to see most of these films. So, this is... Yeah, I... Yeah, same. So, this will be interesting, I'm, uh, but it's if anything, it's kind of put me in a, in a frame of mind for the things that I do want to see. Okay. Um, so, why don't we start with Best Director? You want to start with Best Director? Yeah. So, we've got... We can do that. Um, we can do that. We've got Bong Joon-ho for Parasite. We've got Sam yeah. Mendes for 1917. We've got Todd Phillips for The Joker. Or, oh, sorry, Joker. We've got Joker. Martin Scorsese for The Irishman and Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yep. So, Nick, of these I, three, what have you seen? Of I those have five, seen, what have you seen? 
<laughs> I think I've literally – oh, no, I've seen Joker and I've seen uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But I am – really really excited so many people have talked it up and I've, i and it's hitting the top 10 of a lot of people's not 2019 but a lot of people's favorite film list is parasite this thing is yeah this thing is, uh, is and i really, really, really yeah. want to watch it um what, yeah. what i'm finding really strange is that it's popped up in a few genre lists mm. as a horror film yeah, that's what I've heard. And then I've also is heard not, other people say, no, well, that's it. And I've heard other people say, I am baffled that it's considered, it's popping up on horror film lists. Okay. So, I think it's a very, that's, and that only makes me more interested because I'm kind of like, a film like that can't, can't be defined like that, I reckon yeah. is, is kind of pretty cool. Um, yeah. And I'm actually, I don't know much about it. I know that it, I've been trying to avoid... I've yeah same. Plot I'm stuff. avoiding. I don't. I don't really want to know anything. Yeah. So we, all I know is, is yeah. that it deals with some uh, with um, poverty. Oh okay. As an I knew it was. To, I knew it was family issues. I knew. I knew yeah. that was around the sort of yeah. So um, like yeah, I'm really excited for that. Have you heard about um, 1917? Sam Mendes <gasps> one shot World War One movie, one <laughs> continuous it's, take. It's not. It's not one shot, and I it's mean, been it's done before. Not. And you know, that's great. I I love Sam Mendes. I think he should do more. You, we really get to see him. But um, yeah, I'm. I don't think Quentin will get it, only because Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was good, but it's not his best. Well, that's funny. Yeah, and I don't know if it is his best, but I also think it's kind of. It's, the one it's getting. Win. It's just getting to that point where it's just like. What are we doing? We've got to give it to yeah. him at some point. What if we actually? It's it's a bit Scorsese with Departed for me. It may not be his absolute okay. best, but when do you but when are you going to get one as good as? Yeah, for all we know, enough. you know Tarantino might not make a movie this good again. I mean, they honestly what? They, really no. You don't know though. You don't know for like they fucked it because really Inglorious Bastards probably was the strongest film since that is done since like since, since they messed it up pulp. for Pulp Fiction. That yeah. was probably yeah. the one that they really should have given it to him for. Yeah, that's if true. If they were ever going to, and then they miss the opportunity mm. there, and so then they've, you know, it, they kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit. I think. I think it's any. I literally think it's anyone's game. I don't think. Um, I will. Scorsese, I will discount. Todd Scorsese Phillips, will get it. Though. I think you don't think Todd's going to get it. No, I don't. Really? Think, I I have a feeling that this uh, there just based on the the social um, yep. kind of what's happening around the movie, not the movie itself. I okay. think there is too much um, – there's as much negative press about Joker as there is positive press. And so, I don't – ne- I think – Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to okay. – you don't have to dig very far to find the um, we're living in a society memes and the – Oh, okay. You know, the, the people that kind of are crying out, you know, taxi driver light. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I, I just think that's enough in these circumstances to kind of say that there won't, it won't be universally supported – yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. But yeah, but other than that, I think maybe the other four are, are pretty much a. It's a bit of a dead heat, really. Yeah, no, I haven't seen it, but I really think that um, Bong Joon Ho will, will take it. I reckon. I don't know. That would be that would be amazing. Yeah. What um. Oh, um. So I just thought we'd also do we'd, what we'll, else? We'll look at the acting categories quickly because there's so many of them. Um, yeah. But with the. Supporting role in any motion picture, you got Tom Hanks for A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Anthony Hopkins for The Two Popes, Al Pacino and Joe Pesci for The Irishman, and Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. I want Brad Pitt to win this because I think he yeah. was the best thing. My, my, he like was my favorite role this year. Like yeah, I've seen. it was the best thing about it. Yeah, he was beyond cool. Like he was just. Um, it was so good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and he played that role so well. Like. Yeah, he, it, was, it was pretty – he was the part that you were waiting for when – because I, I – it was my understanding that <laughs> if you just lifted Margot Robbie's character out of that kind of movie, it would be a lot better. That's not to take away anything from what she did. It's just that I think it would have been better had that part been left out or in a director's cut or something like that. But – Brad Pitt was always the part that I wanted the movie to go back to. Um, I was the I same was like, when oh, when it was splitting yeah. off in its, into its different elements. Yeah, the Brad yeah. Pitt element was always my most my most enjoyable part. That yeah. scene where he visits the compound um, yeah. is is <laughs> the, okay. honestly the best. The, my favorite scene from a movie this year. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, yeah. I might have um, even said it in the episode we talked about it. He 
Yeah. He just he is movie star cool in this movie. Like yeah. he does stuff that makes yeah. me remember why he is legitimately a movie star. Just with looks at a camera, yeah. just the way he stands, he's something else. Um, yeah. Obviously, I, I'm very excited to see The Irishman. I've got to find four hours at some point to actually watch it. Four hours. It'll happen. Jesus. Uh, I don't know. It's on, the, it's on the cards. It's on the cards. Um, I literally haven't heard about The Two Popes. Actually, no, I have. I've seen the poster, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah, that's um, about it. I will probably get around to it at some point, but I, knowing me, that sounds like the kind of movie that I'll leave pretty late in my Oscar watching because I feel yeah. like I'll just have to watch it at some point. It's a, it's a push. It's a push to watch. That's like, it. The, like The Phantom Thread. I still haven't seen it. Oh, Phantom Thread is um, – Phantom Thread was my favourite of that year. I know. You said. And out I, of, and out I, of all of them. I absolutely I loved it. Um, I need to watch it. God damn. Best performance yeah, by an actress was, um, in a supporting role in any motion picture. Mm-hmm. We've got Kathy Bates in Richard Jewell, Annette Benning in The Report, Laura Dern mm-hmm. in Marriage Story, Jennifer Lopez in Hustlers, and Margot Robbie in Bombshell. I've not seen any Jennifer of these Lopez. yet. I haven't seen any of these yet. Jennifer Lopez. I would, I'm really interested to see Hustlers. I've heard really good things about it. Um, and knowing that uh, apparently the report is not very good, so I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what I've heard as well. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure about Annette Benning's inclusion there. I'm really interested to mm-hmm. see Bombshell. I, I and um I obviously like I think Margot Robbie's an excellent um performer. So yeah. I, I'm kind of leaning towards that because I'm excited to see it and I think it's a bit of a hot button issue. Yeah. Um but yeah, that's probably where I'm leaning there. Oh, and I love Kathy Bates always, so who knows? She might um, yeah. apparently Richard Jewell is an interesting film. It's Clint kind of Clint Eastwood doing Making some statements. Okay. Um, Clint, uh, Clint needs to take his foot off the accelerator for a bit. His, <laughs> yeah. The mule the mule was not good. The mule was, yeah, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. But what I heard, I was like, oh, Clint, maybe take a take a break for a bit. You know. He might, but, need, yeah, he might need a little break. But the, little break. I mean, the thing um, is, he might take a break and that might be it for him. So, it's kind yeah, of. Yeah, I know. I know, right? Yeah. You never know. Maybe that's. Yeah, um, I'm hearing I'm hearing a lot of good things around Marriage Story as well. That's yes, which is uh, which is just press. sitting on Netflix. So we, I really think we've just got to yeah. get off our button and just push play on that one and just watch it. Yeah, hundred <laughs> um, uh, percent. Best performance yeah. by an actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. We've got Daniel Craig for Knives Out, Roman Griffin Davis for Jojo Rabbit, Leonardo DiCaprio for Once mm-hmm. Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, Taron Egerton for Rocket Man, and Eddie Murphy for Dolomite Is My Name. I really hope it's either going to be Jojo Rabbit or Dolomite is my name. I really do. Either either Eddie Murphy has a mad comeback or um, Roman Griffith Davis just wipes the floor with Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know. Look, Leo, <laughs> Leo was pretty amazing as well. In Once he, was, time in Hollywood. he was. He does some really great work. Taron Egerton is pretty great in Rockman too. I'm glad he's there. It's a bit of a mm. token we needed to fill it out because this com- this category is about musicals, so we need to put the one decent musical in there the somewhere. The one musical in there, um, yeah. Because Lord knows Cats isn't showing up anywhere. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> uh, and I still haven't seen Knives Out, I'm, and I'm really, like, I've just got to go Yeah, it chopping the bits of shit. Yeah, absolutely am. Um, but I'm kind of with you. I, I really want it to be Eddie Murphy because yeah. I, I was just blown away by what he did in, in Dolomite. I thought it was just so good. But Leo was so good. Absolutely. He was another one that, like, he was, like, you you remembered why, oh, yeah, he's Leonardo DiCaprio, and he actually does have chops. Do you know what I mean? It's not it's not just, a, oh, yeah, this is just another Leonardo DiCaprio movie where he just does his thing. And no, 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 there was some serious chops on the screen. No, look, like, and I, I feel like he hasn't phoned it in for many years now, and maybe I'm just taking Leo for granted because he is always so good. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, you're right. I mean, he's he's great. He, he, he works his butt off. He does. Um, best performance by an actress in a motion, motion picture, musical, or comedy. We have Anna mm-hmm. Diarmas uh, for Knives Out, Aquafina for The Farewell, Kate Blanchett for Where'd You Go, Bernadette, uh, Beanie Feldstein for Book Smart, and Emma Thompson for Late Night. I have not seen any of these. I am all over Book Smart. Bernie, you need to get it. I've heard Book Smart um, is amazing. You love Book Smart. Is, yeah, I you is said. my. Yeah, if it wasn't for Endgame coming out, and and even if it is, uh, Booksmart is my movie of the year. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, it hundred percent dro- uh, rocketed to the top. It is such a film. Um, I've I've seen it three times now. Wow. And yeah, yeah. Um, it's just so good. I haven't seen any of the other movies, so I I, I don't have anything to to compare it with. But um, but yeah, man, God, it's a film. And a lot of people like I, I've said this before when I talked about it. A lot of people compared it to to Super Bad, and I think that kind of gives it. I, I don't think that's the right thing to say about it. it. It's its own thing. Sure, it is about two girls finishing high school, and Super Bad was about two guys finishing high school. Like, but this is a, in a different category. This isn't the slapstick. Um, uh, type 
uh, dick jokes. This isn't that. This is way more intelligent as a, and has a lot more to say. Yeah, right. Um, and has a lot more heart to it as well. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I'm all about book smart, man. I, I will be all over it soon. It's definitely going to be one of these end of year list catch ups. Um, the yeah. other, yeah, I th- feel like the Kate Blanchett nomination is a bit of a. Uh, it's Kate Blanchett, so we're going to nominate her because I haven't heard great sure. things about that movie. Um, okay, and just it, Late Night looks good. Yeah, I, I heard that, mixed that things about that bad. as well. Um, yeah. I feel this category feels a little a little weak. Um, it yeah. feels like they've kind of just had to uh, maybe fill out the numbers a little bit. Um, I wouldn't be sure. su- surprised to see Aquafina win this one because the farewell yeah. is um, getting quite oh, that's good getting raves. Huge. Yeah, yeah, and I think she's kind of a bit of a you know she's a hot property at the moment. People are, are kind of getting yeah. a bit excited for her. She's done some ever basically her roles prior to this. She's been the standout. She's um, you know was it Crazy Rich Asians. And oh yeah, um, I think yeah, Ocean's Eight isn't she one of the in Ocean's Eight? Yeah, as well? she's in Ocean's Eight. Um, yeah, yeah, and she's always made an impact, and she's really starting to kind of cement herself as a as a real st- uh, screen presence. So I wouldn't be surprised okay. if that went to her. I think. Cool. Um, what have we got here? Best motion picture, musical or comedy? We've got Dolomite is my name, Jojo Rabbit, Knives Out, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Rocket Man. I. Don't feel you want like, Dolomite to win, don't you? No, look, I want Once Upon a Time in Hollywood to win, but I don't feel like it's a comedy. I feel like it's really ridiculous that it's in that category. Yes, yeah, there are really moments that you laugh in it, but it is not a comedy. Yeah, it's not a comedy. Knives Out is a comedy. Joe Rabbit is a comedy. Yeah. Rocket Rocket Man is, a is only in there because it is a musical element. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it, and, it is pitched pretty much exactly as a musical, but they always do that with those music biopics. They put it in musical, even if it's not yeah, technically what a musical is. Yeah. Um, even if it's control, like, <laughs> do they put control the, yeah. in musical? Or- no, oh, God. no, I'm just guessing. <laughs> well, they, I mean, even like something like I mean? um, Bohemian Rhapsody, that's yeah. not structured like a musical. The songs are happening no. diegetically in that. They're not. Whereas in Rocket Man, they are like it is a musical. It's a musical. They're, that's they're structured should, yeah. in, in like a fan. Uh, it's it's musical fantasy kind of style, and yeah. that's what. Yeah. Um, I think that's what the category was an, ori- originally intended to represent back when musicals were much more common. Um, right. And so they found they find ways to shove any kind of oh it's got music in it yeah cool it's in musical cool, comedy. It in. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it needs to be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'd also be happy if Dolomite is my name one because I I really enjoyed that film. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What do we got? Best performance by an actor in a motion picture drama. We have Christian Bale, Ford versus Ferrari. Antonio Banderas, Pain and Glory, Adam Driver for Marriage Story, Joaquin Phoenix for The Joker, sorry, Joker, and Jonathan Price for The Two Popes. Jonathan Price, all I remember him from is uh, that um, uh, Bond, when he was the Bond villain. <laughs> That's, uh, he was the Bond villain in Tomorrow Never Dies. Tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow oh. Never Dies, yeah. Or is it World Is Not Enough? No, it was Tomorrow Never Dies. World Is Not Enough was... Which one's Robert Jesus Carlyle? Christ. That was oh I don't know no that was well was enough I love that we talk about Bond movies. sorry my fault no, that's right. um I, I think I think Joaquin is gonna clean up I think Joaquin I think you've got a, he's got a very good chance of winning this um, yeah. I would say maybe Adam Driver could be the kind of dark horse on this one yeah um, but yeah I think I think if they're gonna give Joker anything it will be Joaquin it will be best yeah actor. yeah yeah hundred percent moving on. <laughs> Uh, best Moving performance on. by yeah, an actress right? in a motion picture drama. We've got Cynthia, uh, Cynthia Arrivo, uh, Arrivo sorry, for Harriet, uh, Scarlett Johansson for Marriage Story, uh, Saoirse Ronan for Little Women, Charlize Theron for Bombshell, and Renee Zellweger for Judy. Charlize Theron, that, that actress from Reindeer Games. Ah, speaking Twice. of, <laughs> that young up-and-comer from Reindeer Games. From Reindeer Games. Um, I have seen Judy and Renee, what Renee Zellweger does is, is honestly remarkable. So I yeah. will be, um, you know, supporting her yeah. wholeheartedly. I also think same with, um, Margot Robbie, I think bombshell being, uh, a bit of a hot button issue at the moment. And you mean, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And seeing the way Charlize has done another, she's done another monster. Like she's unrecognizable. Yeah. Full, yeah, full transformation. Yeah. So I wouldn't That's be surprised. What does. She's so good. Yeah, well, I mean, she, Damn. she's she. It's funny because you look at her and you're like, I know it's her, but my brain doesn't but, commute, uh, compute that I can't that see she's her. in there. Yeah, and that's pretty amazing. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, and yeah, yeah and as for, I, will I, I do want to see. Um, I think Little Women will be quite good. I enjoy the Little Women story, so yeah, that could be a lot of fun. 
fun is probably not the right word for that. <laughs> fun is not the right word, no. <laughs> um, yeah, Charlie's, man, seriously. Watching Reindeer Games all the way through it, I was like, I just want to watch Mad Max again because this is Furiosa and this is weird. <laughs> she uh, she uh, went a long way. She yeah, From where she so begun good. to where she know, is right? now, Charlie's has uh, climbed, climbed the ranks. Um, Huge. And good on her because she is extremely talented. Uh, best motion picture drama. We've got 1917, The Irishman, yep. Joker, Marriage Story, and The Two Popes. So I think the there's a couple missing from the director lineup. Oh, no. Yep. So um, obviously Tarantino, that's been put in comedy, and Parasite uh, yep. is in foreign film. So we've got Marriage Story <laughs> and The Two Popes jump in as well. Right. So I'm, okay. I'm fairly certain The Irishman is going to win this. Irishman's going to win this, yeah. Well, I hope. Either, it's going to be either Irishman or Joker. I don't know. I think Joker is the dark, like I said, if depending it's how a, the... It's the dark horse. It depends how they go, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it, you know, it depends what the public perception of it is. I can see Joker having one of those kind of social media black uh, backfire kind of things, the same, uh, you know, the, the way that certain movies have had in the, in the last couple of years where... Yeah, Todd Phillips will uh, you know say something dumb because he tends to oh, say because right. he tends to say dumb shit, um, <laughs> and you know it'll, yeah. it'll pick up and steam. Then everyone and will then, just everyone will just hate them, the Joker. Well, Even though start, everyone's like, well, it was a good movie. Well, yeah. it's the the problem with it is is because it uh, well, this might just be this is completely conjecture what I'm saying right now, but it's yeah. the kind of movie where because it's because it's such borderline, um, you know. Anarchistic, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's the it's uh, what it's saying about social, the you know the social time that we're in. You know, we live in a yeah. society. Mm. It's it's borderline can be seen from two different perspectives as kind of insightful or naive. So depending on yeah. if he starts doing the interview circuit and sounds like a bit of an idiot, yeah, it can it might end up reflecting on the film itself. Do you know what I mean? Because mm, suddenly yeah, these yeah. Pe- things that people think are poignant or reflective are now just like, yeah. oh, that was completely accidental or, oh, you're on the wrong track completely. Yeah, right. So I'd be really interested to see how that does go because th- it's Todd Phillips we're talking about here. This is the guy that knocked on the door in old school and asked where there's the orgy. Um, yeah. <laughs> hang on, was that old school? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, old school. We're running to the quiet. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. It can go either way, and that's that's really. It's not great that, that things do that, but yeah, it's um, it it does tend to do that sometimes. It's unfortunately so, the uh, the you know the the bloody. That's what we're living in at the moment. Yeah. Um, social media can kind of make or break, um, films' chances. Although, funnily enough, last year everyone thought Green Book would have had their chances destroyed by the social media kind of outcry about that which yeah. you know what, whatever you make of it I, you know I kind of stood by that the film was stood on its own merits despite you know despite the social media backlash um, okay. and then it yeah ended up winning anyway so mm. who knows yeah. who so that's, knows that's the, that's the Globes I will say this this year surprisingly mm. small amount of um, we're nominating this person because they're a giant movie star even though even though their movie sucked which Golden Globes tend well, to go do a lot. Well, Gone the Days are, um, what was the movie? The Tourist. Exactly. The that's... fact that that the fact that that was at the Globes, I was like, this movie is so shit. Yes. I've no one's seen it. No one's going to watch it. The fact that they're getting nominated for this thing is laughable. That's the that's um, always the example you turn to. Yeah. I think that they and, were so desperate to have a superstar like Johnny Depp there that they were like, oh, just put yeah. the Tourist in musical comedy. Because it was the both. It was Angelina and, and Johnny yeah. Depp in the same and movie. So it was like, cared. oh my God. And no one gave a fuck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas I'm really glad something like Dolomite is my name is in there because you know that this thing did not go to any cinemas or maybe, maybe. It did the, it uh, did know, the qualifying your... run for the Oscars. So exactly. it, it did some, yeah. it, it did some local cinemas and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. not, if this thing isn't going to massive multiplexes. There's no way. Well, hopefully but, yeah. if, if it does do well enough here, like if Eddie Murphy mm. wins and it wins musical comedy, it yeah. might be enough to kind of kick the run up, kick it, yeah, like it, yeah kick it yeah. into Oscar ca- contention because it yeah. probably deserves to be there. Really, it would be amazing if it ended up in the top five. Really, oh, it, isn't it a flat pretty, out comedy though? Yeah, but what's what's uh, like a really comedy? really great comedy that? Uh, when was the 
Well, yeah, go on. I can't remember the last. When was the last comedy time comedy? Exactly, exactly. exactly. But, it doesn't happen, and and this is the this is the argument that a lot of comedians have is that drama is a mindset. You can get into it. It can it can be kind of it's not easy to do, but it's easier to do than to land a joke well. Like to to do a scene that is meant to be funny and have people laugh. Like that's hard. I, that's I just, absolutely hard. Yeah, I just I just feel that yeah. I'm 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 on the side of the argument where I don't know why more comedies aren't nominated for Oscars. It just doesn't make sense to me. The it's the it's it's the way that it's the lingering effect of them. I think I think as human beings we are trained to have a, a lingering emotional connection to things that made us feel dr- that felt dramatic to yeah. the, to the, rather than to things that made us laugh. Yeah, right. Even though Plus they I last think, for longer. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, Dolomite is is something else. Really, really great. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it. Try looks so good. Do get on it. All right, well, that's the Golden Globes. There's a lot to watch. Shit. Yeah, so man. We'll um, we'll Golden check Globes. back in when things uh, win. It's an interesting timeline this year. Everything's kind of packed in really close together. Um, oh, really? It's not as spread out as it as it's been in in previous years. So yeah, it it could it could mean two different things. It could mean that we've got really really different. Oscar nominations compared to Golden Globe nominations, like yeah. every, every nominating body, because they don't, then they don't, they're not going to be as influenced as the others because they're so close. Yeah. All the voting time is so close together, so we might see yeah, yeah. really different nominations, or they'll be identical, <laughs> but we'll have different winners, which could be cool. Um, because yeah. you won't get, hopefully, with a bit of luck, you won't get that run from one to the next to the next to the next with the yeah. same winner because they did a really good SAG speech so everyone voted for him for the Oscars and yeah. blah, blah, you know stuff like that um, oh, I know him I'll vote for him no, yeah exactly exactly watch the fucking movie oh he was just so yeah. charming on that interview I saw him do let's you know blah 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 uh, yeah might it actually, hurts me it, it might hurts me be entirely on the merit of the of the film itself which would be amazing mm, yeah. all right so Nick cool should we move on to our Ties. feature prayers my man feature prayers oh, let's do it let's do it And now for our feature presentation. We walk out of here. What's the first thing you're going to do? Go out and get myself a mug of hot chocolate. A piece of pecan pie. All right. All right. He was a reformed ex-con who wanted to start a new life. You Ashley? I have been dreaming about that smile for so long. She was the girl of his dreams. When I read what you wrote to me, I said... Here's a guy they say is a criminal, but he's not. When I get back in that room, you better be wearing nothing but a candy cane. Welcome home, candy. Hey, sis. But between them and happiness... What do you want from me? I read your letters, convict. He knows you worked at that casino. ...stands a team of criminals who wanted to take down the state's richest casino. That's just my luck. Finally meet a boy that I'm crazy about, and uh, my brother wants him worse than I do. You want to hear about some job of mine? I want some hot chocolate and some pecan pie. Let's start talking. I can really go for some onion rings. <laughs> what started out as love... Do you remember all those letters you wrote me about me and you against the whole world? We can have it all if you just give him what he wants. Could end up in murder. What do you think's going to happen? The thing's going to be over? He's just going to let me go? He's going to shoot me in the back of the head like this. You're going to give me a disguise. You're sending me into an Indian casino dressed... Like a cowboy. It was that or a ballerina. Hey. He was talking to the manager inside there. Something tells me you're not being totally honest with me. Rule one. Never put a car seat behind the wheel. Ben Affleck, Gary Sinise, Charlie Theron. In the new thriller from John Frankenheimer. Ow. Wow. All right, so we're talking reindeer games. <laughs> now, Nick, reindeer, yeah, Tice, reindeer games. I, I could have sworn I'd seen this movie. I don't yep. think I'd seen it. I don't think I've seen this movie before. Really? Oh, I saw it. It came. What year did this come out? Two thousand? Was it two thousand? Yeah, it's. It's. I think it was meant to be ninety nine. I was reading, and it got pushed back because of the reshoots and um, cuts oh, okay. that were insisted upon by bloody. Weinstein's, yeah, um, and so it ended um, up being yeah, 2000. it was two thousand. 
Yeah. So I've, I haven't seen it since then, so I haven't seen it in 19 years, which I'm kind of glad, to be honest. Look, I have um, a feeling that I'd seen <laughs> portions of it, like big chunks of it, at like a party or something like a movie night, and I'd my not like a not like a house party. What kind of shitty party? No, like, a, you know, like a movie game. night where you know we had yeah, a bunch yeah. of and we probably it was a five weeklies or like you know five videos oh. for five bucks kind of deal, and we just put a bunch yeah, yeah. on, but we'd end up chatting and drinking and doing all that kind of stuff yeah. anyway. Nice, because I remember parts of this, but I don't remember. Okay, like, um, for instance, I remembered the darts when he started throwing darts at him. I just yep, had I, yep. that that happened, and I was like, oh. Yeah, that's right. Maybe I have seen this. But then <laughs> when things started happening at the end, I was like, oh, my God, yeah. I have not seen this movie. Because this movie <laughs> is – this is two movies in a row where the ending is bonkers. I know. I know. It's such a it's such a double back. It's the time when everyone was – everyone was on board with, oh, you know how Sixth, Sixth Sense, like, made a lot of money because of its, um, because of its uh, twist at the end? Let's just do all the twists. We'll just let's make just a movie literally, with twists. Yeah, let's li- literally put every twist in a movie. Because <laughs> every five minutes, something else happened, and you were something like, else oh, happens. God, like, all right, cool. Yeah. I've got to compute this now. Okay. And then every single time there was a new twist, it made you look back at what had happened and be like, well, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I know. And I wasn't on board at the start. So, the fact that they started twisting, I'm like, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. You need a, you need a, like a straight line. Um, give me some decent solid script first before you start twisting. No, no, no. It was chubby checker style all the, all, all the way across. Let's twist again. It, chub- it was like, the fuck is going oh, on? Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, it was okay. so funny. Well done. <laughs> this yeah, was the, it the was. chubby checker of movies. <laughs> it yes. was. Um, God damn Not it. bad. Not bad. I like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, look, so I reckon... Uh, Let's start at the start. Let's start at the start. We, I think Come we on. do need to talk about this slightly chronologically because mm. that's where most of the – because that way we can kind of keep tabs on what's happening and then reflect yeah, because- on how that makes no sense once you find out. It's like yeah. it's like we actually have to start at the end and the beginning and meet in the exactly. middle. Exactly, and then meet. we'll meet in the middle. Yeah, 100%. God so, it does it. start – yes, we do have this extended so prison the- sequence. Yep. Yep. Um, ben Affleck With, and this other guy. What's who, the other guy's name? Right. This other guy. <laughs> I've seen him in other things. James Frain, his name is. Right. James um, Frain. Yes. Who are, it's the, you know, they're doing yeah. the typical, um, it's the cliche where, you know, two days, man, we're out of here. Yeah. Prison, prison, prison scenes. Prison where, life. Yep. Where just lay low. That's it. Everything's just, you know, chilling out on, in the, uh, in the yard talking in, about in, having hot chocolates and pecan pie and. Oh, I'm yeah. already out. Like, fuck. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? And it was so when, – when it happened, so they're, they're talking about getting out. There's a brawl that happens. Um, James jumps – James Frayne jumps in the way of Ben Affleck, gets j- gets shivved, and already I know that he's not dead. Oh, see, Even I though, didn't – yeah, no, I was I was okay. Click? Yeah, I, I, I was like, yeah, okay, good. I figured yeah. – I was kind of in that cliche – because this is probably where the movie tricked me enough – is that I'm yeah. I'm so well trained to know that as soon as someone talks about getting out of prison in two days to be with the girl he loves, that guy's gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> like, that you guy's know gonna I mean? die early. He's gonna die early. hard, yeah. and it's you yeah. know, he's he's just not gonna make it. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. He died with a vengeance. He did die with a vengeance. You're exactly right. <laughs> um, and yet, how weird is that scene though? By the way, like the the um. Where it's it's uh, the, the bugs, the nightmare bugs. Yeah, the the nightmare. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, the mo- monster beetles, monster beetles. Yeah, monster beetles. I felt like I was watching like a a um a Cronenberg movie or something. I was like, oh, this has something to do with it. What's going on? No, what, what does he say? We- monster, monsters. There's monsters in the gelatin. The, yeah, there's monsters in the gelatin. There's monsters in the gelatin. It so stands strange. up. That's so Isaac weird. Hayes too. Yeah, no. What the hell? <laughs> Just Chef. a random drop of, of of shaft, man. Like, okay, what's up, shaft? How you um, going? Cool. Yeah. Not well. No, not well at all. <laughs> um, and then, like, so oh, damn the, it. the 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 so let's talk about. Let's go straight back. So the, yeah. the main like spoilers yeah. for reindeer games. Oh, you're not watching it. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. Audience, we love you. So yeah. that means the whole. So if this is the first and ultimate end twist, is that he is not yeah. dead. That's true. He fakes. That means that he. Fakes he, this. he that's right. And he paid the guy to stab him instead of the other guy. Yep. Instead of Ben Affleck. 
So that is the first big twist, right? Yeah. Well, it's the it's the final and, twist, but it's the first chronologically that we are aware of. Yeah. And this this requires a lot of like <laughs> a lot of planning. <laughs> I know that Affleck even says it at the end. He's like, this plan should not have worked. Like this is a big, this is, and he goes, yeah, we're all about the long con or he says something like that. Like yeah, exactly. we know, we know. And I'm like, no way this could have worked. Like not no, a chance in I, I actually kind of gave the movie props <laughs> for actually acknowledging the fact that this is ridiculous. And like the fact that he kind of goes, yeah, yeah, this could have fallen apart at any second. And it just didn't. Yeah. How amazing is that? Yeah. And I'm kind of like, fell into no, the track. no, that's not how it works. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Sorry. No. 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 Because no, he's no, been pass. in there. So Ben Affleck's been in there for for how how many years? Six years. Uh, six. And no, but, five. So and he's only and the other guy's only been in there for two. For Is two. It two. So yeah. in two years, he was his plan was to become best friends with him, talk yep. so much about this girl and this casino. Yep. To the to the point that he will then be unable to resist the girl the girl and and, and also enough know enough about, about, the casino about the casino to pu- to pull off the gig it seems like it's a lot it's really far more effort than just uh telling somebody about the gig and getting like and giving them a cut <laughs> and getting them I to know, do it right? like an actual yeah. like oceans <laughs> eight, get- like oceans 11 this thing and just go hey guys this is the deal we'll split it eight ways evenly yeah, hundred percent. Seems a 100%. lot safer. Or tell him that you're setting him up. Like, tell get Ben Affleck in on it, so you don't cut it seven ways or however many ways. You just cut it three ways between um, Nick, Ben Affleck, and Charlie Theron, and that's it. And you do your thing, and that's it. Maybe, yeah. Maybe just get in, it, like, get him in on it the whole time, and say, video? "Hey, so like, uh, 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 Ashley slash M- Millie, Molly." Molly, yeah. Yeah. Ashley slash Molly oh. is going to pretend to like to be with this guy that's basically, they're all dumb as dog shit. We're going to use them as the muscle. We're, we'll yeah. all get away with it at the end and happy da- happy trails. Why wasn't that the fucking plan? That would have been know. such a bit of movie. So tell me that wouldn't have been. If they're mates, you know. Then tell me you wouldn't. Like, even if you were just pretending to be mates with someone for two years, I reckon by the end of it, you'd be like, oh, he's a pretty cool dude. <laughs> yeah, he's a pretty nice guy. You know, he's nice. They he's spend got a family. They're spending a lot of time together. God damn okay. it. As if. Yeah. Isn't that what um, Stockholm Syndrome is sort of like? You get yeah. to know someone enough that, oh, yeah, they're fine. You know, yeah, man, I, I, like, I mean, obviously, I don't know it personally, but I've got a feeling that you spend some time in the clink together. <laughs> That's a bond. You, to, That's, you, you, get, you don't break exactly. that bond. You don't break that bond. Well, you wouldn't want – you know, you, if you're sharing the same cell as someone, you would make sure that that person is okay and doesn't, you know, do things to you at night time. That's a good point. You know. <laughs> I reckon if you find someone that you share a cell with that just also doesn't do any of that kind of stuff, you're pretty much – you're lucked out there. You're just kind of like, great. Exactly. I found well, my friend for life. Fun. Best mate ever. Exactly. Dude, you're, you're a champ. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> what a top-notch dude. Then- <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Um, God. So yeah. So, so so when he gets so when he gets out, right? So yeah. Ben Affleck gets out. Mm-hmm. Then he's, he thinks his friend is dead. He mourns him. He cries. He goes out, gets on the bus, sees Charlize Theron's character, leaves her there. Doesn't the man up and go? Oh, by the way, I shared a cell with. This is what pissed me off. And I remember, I remember when I first watched this movie. I, I still remember this. That this, I wasn't a fan of it at all. I was like, well, you're just a dick. Who who? leaves the girl, like you shared a cell with him for two years, right? Yes. But you're mates with him, or you think you are anyway. Yes. Um, and his girl rocks up, and you don't go up to her and go, sorry to tell you, you're, you're the guy that you've been running to just died yesterday. Or, like, don't do that. But instead, he just leaves. Yeah, I, I love that but- he feels like that. there's only two <laughs> options. One is to ignore her completely. And the or second to one is to, to pretend to be Nick. And sleep with her. Like, yeah. come Surely on, the, are you the, the me? first option is that when you walk out and see her and recognize her and go straight after her and go, Hi, my name's Rudy. Yeah. Nick was exactly. my soulmate. Really great dude. We were best friends. He got janked. He unfortunately yesterday. yesterday. Do, do you, you want to have it? Let's go. Yeah, do you want to go, go get a cup of coffee or something? Because yeah. we can share memories no, and mourn and yeah. you know, blah blah blah. No, I, was I love coffee, that man. it's, it's hard, like that's not even in the morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I love that yeah. it's not that's not even one of his thought process Definitely. options. 
Exactly. It's either what completely abandon her or pretend to be Nick and bang her. Like So so as an audience member, you're you don't care for this guy at all. Ben Affleck's a prick completely. Well, yeah. You're like, well, you're just a dick. Like and that's why I didn't like the film, because I was like, well, it, he's a hard why, protagonist why to get behind, to, isn't yeah, he? Exactly. He, he's also a real oh. whiny shit. Every time they put a gun on him, he oh, whines still, like yeah. like he goes from, you know, trying to be calculated and maybe try and talk his way out of this situation and be smart. They all they yeah. have to do is turn a gun on him and he's like, Oh no, no, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, exactly. Loses exactly. his mind. I'm like, Jesus man, get your shit together. I love how he spends about I'm twenty sure. minutes of this movie hyperventilating, uh with hypothermia because he was underwater. Except we don't do what yeah. normal movies do and just kind of put a warm blanket on him and get him to talk normally again. He has no. to talk like this for t- t- twenty min- minutes I of know. the movie. Oh God, seriously! Like, oh my God, can we please just get over this? <laughs> can, we, can we punch him? Let's punch him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there's a thing like like one of my notes. One of, <laughs> it, I knew it was early on, and I've always kind of thought this. Whatever Affleck's been in, he's not. Ben Affleck is not the best actor. He's he, he and especially in Reindeer Games, there were scenes that oh, you kind of had a handle on that. You maybe worked it a bit. You kind of knew what you were doing. Other scenes, you were like, you are a film student actor, aren't you? Throughout his whole career, you can see that as a director. Ben Affleck is on on the ball pretty much 100% of the time. I love Ben Affleck as a director. Like, even even as Batman, there were scenes when he's Bruce Wayne that I'm like, oh, this is cringeworthy. Can we get over this, please? You know. So, yeah, into I'd, watching look, I'd in- say he's pretty hit and miss as an actor. I've never really – I've never really loved him, yeah. I'm yeah. trying to think of a, of a Ben Affleck performance that I'm like, yeah – he nailed that. I cannot think of one right now. No, no. Even something, even back, either. you know, like Chasing Amy days, I still found him kind of... Exactly. Un- ...not really quite sure of how, like, what he was, what was going to be his thing, you know? Like, is he yeah. gonna, was it action, like, he had a weird kind of trajectory after Goodwill Hunting where, you know, he probably could have done really anything and... He could have. ...made some kind of dodgy choices, really. Um, well, I, like working with the, Kevin Smith, I don't think of, was a bad choice. But there was a lot of Kevin Smith. Yeah, I think that's good. But um, he's uh, like stuff away from that. There's not really a lot. <laughs> I don't. No. I can't use my phone because we're currently. I'm using it to. to oh, you're streaming to, on it to Skype you. Um, I'm. I, I heard bounce was good. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a lie. No, no, it wasn't. That was a lie. That was a, that was a lie. Um, but yeah, like yeah, he just. He wasn't believable, like at all, in this film. It was just I found him. Was, I found him believable as like a whiny, unlikable shitbag. Um, I, but not to get beaten up because I know that Ben Affleck is six three. He's almost six four. No, that's a good you know point. Mean? Gary Sinise <laughs> is like five foot two. Um, exactly. Probably Ben Affleck is massive. So yeah. it's it's kind of yeah. They and did well. Donald, they didn't show Donald that. Logue or whatever. He's not threatening to anybody. Yeah, exactly. But um, but going up against like the flip of that coin, the other side of that coin is Gary Sinise is acting the shit out of this, and he's awesome. I like. I, Gary I, I made a note about Gary Sinise in this because he he's got to be up there as one of those really underrated actors that yeah. I am always extremely happy to see. Yep. But never no ever he, he never jumps to mind when I think of like actors that I really love. But yeah. he's always good. Yeah. But what I find really interesting is he, as a villain, he is equally as believable as a villain as he is a good guy. That's true. Like I He's find- the guy that you, either, you want him on your side, but he's, he's such a good – he fills the gap for best supporting so well that you – yeah, he's yeah, he's, he's almost kill- like yeah. a really good score. Do you know what I mean? Like if you for- you forget that the score is there, you're just being affected by his performance. Yeah, you forget. Thing. Yeah, exactly. You you forget. You, you're not thinking about Gary Sinise anymore. You're thinking about the character. That's mm. it's obviously that's the si- signal of an ex- exceptional character actor. But it, like exactly. I think about something like think about him in Apollo 13, right? Yeah, he is just this rock of security. Like you feel so mm. he he you he puts you at ease with his like with how capable he is and how good a guy he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, you feel you feel his his pain and his sadness that he can't be up there, but you know that he's going to work his ass off to make sure that they don't, um, you know, that they actually survive, right? And then, yeah. on the flip side, flip. you'll go to, to something like Ransom. 
Yeah. Where he's just, Where he, oh my God, he's, a, he's a, just he's a He's so scary. But he's just so scary. You you don't know what he's capable of. No. And he looks like that as well. Like, oh, and he's, like he kind of doubles down. There's sort of a little bit of Ransom, that Ransom character in this. Um, there are, yeah, it's there are similarities to it, I would say, for sure. Because they're both kind of mm. scummy, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I know in really Ransom thoughts. he's trying to be, like, doesn't he pretend to be someone a bit classy, but he's actually, like, living in a drug den and it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. 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 Um, he's, he's he's a cop. Like, he's he's meant to be a really good cop, but he's actually, Oh, that's like, right, that's right. Disgusting. Yeah, he's a horrible guy. Um, yeah, he's a... God, that's a good movie. He's a classic. Yeah, classic underrated good actor, Gary Sinise. Yeah. Big fan. Gary Sinise. We should do a top ten underrated actors. Oh yeah, that'd be that, that'd be a good one to do. That would be a good one, but it's yeah, underrated. it's not even it's it's not even like it's not necessarily even underrated. It's just like actors that you not forget are enough. just really great. <laughs> yeah, hundred. All right, so back so, to this fucking movie then. Um, <laughs> so, um, back to this fucking movie. Yeah, back to this. Play. Um, um. So we've got, um, so as so as the plot takes shape, we have the. Um, we have this kind of beginning of a relationship building between Charlize and Ben Affleck. Um, Which I, yeah. I, I love that they so both have that yeah. moment where they're like, oh, I thought maybe you would see me and f- like, why didn't you talk to me? I thought maybe you'd see me and I wouldn't be what you wanted. And she was like, oh, I thought maybe I was not going to be good enough for you. And I'm like, yeah, you are legitimate movie stars. <laughs> Charlize Theron is like something else. It is Ben Affleck. He's six foot three, Ben Affleck. Yeah. Like, nobody's having second guesses when they see either of these two. <laughs> if you get out of prison and you see Charlize Theron is the one that's been writing you letters, you're like, hot damn. <laughs> well, clearly I did something okay. Yeah. And if you're Charlize yeah. Theron writing to someone that you've never seen before who's a prison inmate and, turns out, and Ben turns Affleck, out, you're Affleck. like, oh, my God, thank you. Thank you. Because <laughs> it could have been. It could have been anything that walked out that door. Exactly. Exactly. Could have been getting, you know, Paul Giamatti. Oh, I'm just thinking. I'm just, I'm just. I'm just. I was thinking just thinking about the actors. ugliest actor I know. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Paul Jim. No, I'm kidding. I love him. I love him. He's gold. I loved him in Planet of the Apes. God, he was good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nick, you have an uncanny ability to pick the most ridiculous movie when you talk about an actor and say, "I loved them in this." Because <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so good. Yeah, thank you. I'll take that. Comment. No, I'll good. Keep shit. it up. I like it. I'll take it. Um, and then, but so- yeah, I didn't. But I didn't believe any of any of that. Like them talking, and then like they go off and have sex. That's fine. But, well, I mean, but, it turns uh, out in the uh, end that uh, we were never meant to believe any of it anyway, because she was yeah. playing him the whole time. So she knew. Exactly. Yeah, she knew that that was like ah. Oh, but she this, knew it was. Re- yeah. And this is why this movie's garbage. So, like, she is the world's greatest actress, not Charlize yeah. Theron. Ashley no, no, slash no. Millie slash Molly. Ashley slash Molly. Is yeah. the greatest actress that's ever lived because she, yeah. she's like not, like what if he just kept riding on the bus? What would she have done? Mm, I don't know. Maybe like, she's not even trying to like kind of get. In in like a- you don't think maybe she would, you know, see him walk out and go, okay, well, that's obviously Rudy. So I'm maybe just going to try and lock eyes and not give myself away but make a bit of eye contact maybe yeah. and maybe if it looks like he's not going to talk up to me maybe go up to him and go oh hi do you um sorry uh, i was expecting somebody and i don't know, if do you know do you, but, yeah. yeah do you happen to know a guy called nick but she, but she who's meant know, to be getting yeah, out she today know, she doesn't know who he looked like she doesn't sorry she didn't know what he looked like so she could have gone up and gone are you nick oh my like, god yeah exactly you know I mean? she actually could have gone up to i know yeah i know there's a long shot but any chance you're nick yeah and he would have been like yeah yeah, there you go. Yeah, and I he am. would have had to choose. That's a bit of plot vice, not him to that, go off on the. Do you oh. know what that makes? That makes her <laughs> twist, her turn, a yeah. little bit more plausible. Exactly. Because if and, and this turn. goes back to this bullshit line at the end is that there's so much that could have gone wrong, <laughs> so seen. much. Not great, not great, man. No. It's a thin, it's a thin plan. No. The plan is thin. It is. Look, it's it's God paper damn. thin. Um. Uh. Yeah. Because um. You know. From there, we get more convoluted nonsense like that you have to you know what i find like this is the longest longest of long cons is that they you know she has they have to like hang out and do stuff and like go shopping (laughs) yeah you know and and you and at this point in the movie you're kind of wondering where this is going you're like what is happening like i don't believe any of it so what am i trying to latch on to 
she, this asshole is taking this poor girl for a ride. Now he's using her money and also sleeping with her. Yeah, like, so even at this point when we're mo- when we we don't think she's the villain, yeah, we uh, all we do is sympathise for her because our main character is a is a jerk. It's just a jerk. Yeah. God damn. And then and when, then no. and then Gary Sinise rocks up with his uh, his uh, goons because they are that's what they are goons and um, hired goons <laughs> hired, hired goons. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they're they are. Literally, literally just hired goons. Yeah. And then they just, they're, they're not professional, don't know what they're doing. They're all over the shop. No, no, they even make a point of saying they don't know what they're doing. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're completely in, out, uh, like in over their heads. And they're yeah. just, all they're doing is hoping that this one guy that worked in security for a casino for, what, a couple of years might be able to do everything that they need. Help out. Yeah. Help out with the plan. How is that a thing? Like, the plan how is, is that a plan? A, the plan is, is loose at best. <laughs> I just, it, it just blows my mind. Like, it <laughs> seriously, it, it would have just, I know we wouldn't have had movie and that's, you know, that's probably for the best, but yeah, it's yeah. one of those movie plots where one line of dialogue or one, uh, one little moment, if it yeah. didn't go exactly as planned, this movie would be over. <laughs> Yeah, and it'd just be like, Absolutely. oh well, we'll just, uh, I guess we'll just, we'll just do it ourselves, <laughs> or I guess not, uh, yeah, or I guess we'll just try something else, you know, <laughs> um, or maybe we'll just, you know, rob the casino old school style, and uh, well, even G- Gary Sinise like, even says this at the end. It's like the guy, <laughs> they didn't even have the right guy, the guy that actually knew, and it was, it ended up being just a big old fashioned smash and grab job, and they got away exactly. with it. They didn't exactly. need anybody for that. You didn't need him. Oh God. It was it was it was not it was not a great film, was it? No, look, and the, so let's let's outline the twists because okay. let's. I think this is just the way to do it. So, the I think the first big twist that we get is that is the oh, first big Gar- twist that Charlize is in on it. <laughs> yes, that Charlize that they're sleeping. That they're sleeping together, and Gary and are sleeping together. They're not actually brother and sister. Yeah. Um. Ben Affleck finds that out by by uh, crashing in on them in the pool while they're yep. talking. So you're like, oh, okay, that's one layer. So that's the first twist, and that could be the the only twist required, really. Yeah, hundred percent. That's that's probably enough of a twist to make this movie somewhat of a you know a noir kind of thriller. You know what I mean? Sure. Where you get a bit of a, it's like, oh, it's you know, not everything is as it seems, um, mm. and then we get away with it from there. Yeah. Um, I do love her character change after you find out, though. Like, because she completely 180s and isn't the vulnerable, crying, bumbling thing that she's, like, actress that she's trying to be. Because she's putting on a show and that's what she's doing really well. But after that, she becomes a lot more strong and you're like, oh, okay, here we go. Now I've got Charlie. Yeah, but they they do that thing where it's like she can't just be also a stronger character. She also has to wear like dark eyeliner now and black coats oh, and yeah. things like that. It's not yeah. like, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's like, it's, you know, it's not good enough that she's actually just changed as a character. She has to have a complete wardrobe. <laughs> makeup cha- change. Wardrobe change. Cause yeah. you can't yeah. be a badass villain and dress in like a puffer jacket. Like, <laughs> no, of course not. No, <laughs> not no one allowed. wants to see you in like a, in like a, was it year 2000? So like a, a raver gear type with yeah. fluoro exactly. things on the shoulder pads. And like sheepskin kind of hoodie. That. Yeah. Exactly. Kind of that. Kind no, of that. no, that's absolutely. Not, that's not no, strong. of course not. Yeah. No. Um, so, the, am I, and so hang on, am I missing anything else? That's the, so that's the, that's the twist. Is there another twist before we find out that um, Nick was never dead? Is there a twist in between? There's the, there's the, um, it's not really a twist, but the, and, and I, every time they said it, I was like, oh, you need to find another name for it. The powwow safe. Oh. <laughs> the powwow. Because so- <laughs> they keep rambling on about this powwow safe, how this is where the owner of the casino keeps his stash and there's billions in this safe, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they spend all this time to find out where the, where these, his office is to find him in there, to open it up. And then in the powwow safe are guns. Like Tell that's the kind of yeah. thing to kind of, yeah. Tell me this though. Is, yeah. so we're never really sure how much Ben Affleck actually knows about this casino. Um, no, you think he's fumbling. I think, I think he made up the powwow safe, to be honest. So, okay. So, 
Because when he first talks about it, I'm like, oh, you made that up. Well done. It sounds like something he's made up, but he hasn't. It's something that has been known about. Now, here's the thing, though. Yeah. If it's something yeah. he heard from Nick, sure. Nick would have known that it wasn't for money, which means which means Ashley Nick would have can- known that it wasn't for money either. So, when they started oh, talking yeah. about this powwow safe, she would have been like, no, no, that, no that's, we don't want that. That's where he keeps his guns. That's so true. I didn't think of that. So I, which I, which to me, it's a, it's actually a, a, a pretty cool moment when it happens. Although yeah. the way he delivers it, saying that it's behind the liquor cabinet, there's a moment where Gary Sinise goes to push on it, and yeah. you see like relief on Ben Affleck's face, like he actually just had a shot in the dark, like he literally was just like, yeah, because that's what he looks like. That's what I mean. He it looks like, like he's he's fully guessing out of nowhere, but he actually he's just like, oh yeah, it's over there. Like- but he knows, <laughs> like because he's been told about it. I don't understand this movie. This movie, it's it twists on itself it's, so much that no line of dialogue is delivered in a way that makes any sense. Yes, although it I will land. give, I will so give. I can't believe it. Uh, Dennis Farina props for turning around, going powwow, Steve, with two fucking Uzis, and just starts blowing oh. them away. How good was he? I do love God, a bit of I Farina. Love I love, he's he passed away this yeah. year. Yeah, it, uh, it, it was yeah. two years ago, I think. Okay. R.I.P. Farina. Damn, man. Yeah. God, he was decent. That was so funny. He was always like he was always good value when he turned up. Always, always yeah. gave it his all. Really, like very good presence. Um, yeah, and especially and especially in the the movie that's that always gets mentioned in the show, the big hit. <laughs> it's in the big hit. I don't remember him in the, in the big, big hit. hit. You don't remember him no, again? I can't we wait need, till we, we need do to do the big, big hit. hit. We need to do the big hit. Oh, is that movie going to be awful? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? That's no. That's you know. We were talking about our commentaries last week. We're gonna do. We're gonna start doing commentaries. Big hit. Oh, okay. Big hit needs Big to be one of our one commentaries. Of yeah, for sure. Oh, it's not him. I'm thinking of someone else. Damn it. Now it's I need to look him. up. Big hit. It's not him. No, I was wrong. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Everyone loves the big hit from 1998. Mark Wahlberg. Who am I thinking of? Yeah, who's like the grizzled oh, old thinking, Italian I'm guy? I'm thinking of Elliot Gould. Oh, I'm Elliot, Elliot Gould. Gould. Sorry. <laughs> Love yeah, no, fair Gould. enough. I can see yeah. that. Yeah, that's not a yeah, not a terrible comparison. Um, yeah, they look similar. So, um, what else have we got here? So he wasn't. Yeah. So I guess he wasn't guessing. So that he was knew the other, where the safe was. Yeah. So that was the other twist with the, the power safe. Other than that, it was just like I kind of before they got to the casino, mm. I didn't really care for this movie at all. It wasn't until about the last 20 minutes that I was like, hey, hey, we've got a bit of a film here. There's as, a film going look, no, on as, in front of my face. As the action <laughs> unfolds, yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely a movie. Um, yeah. As the, like, the action isn't terribly staged at all. It's, it's well handled. No, it's quite good. I mean, it's yeah. directed by a very good, well, a, a prolific director who has done a yeah. lot of... Um, you know, a lot of action specifically, quite a lot of action yeah. movies dating back to, God, the 50s and 60s. So, he knows his way around um, an action scene. An action scene, yeah. Yeah. Um, and whether, you know, it's, I don't, funnily enough, this movie doesn't feel like a movie directed by a 70-year-old. It feels like a movie directed by someone who is maybe a year or two out of film school to me. Yeah. It feels yeah, like 100%. it's it feels like it's really like edgy for edginess's sake, you know, we're like yeah. there's a lot of really um there's a lot of intrusive kind of close ups and strange like lots of Dutch angles and um yeah. you know my my first note is that the film is quite ugly. It's not a pretty looking no, movie. No, it's not it's um, I wouldn't it's, say it's I don't, well it's, but it's I don't cold, think that's a directorial though. choice though. I don't, I don't think that's um, a directorial choice. I think that, like, the snow, where they're shooting, like, even the casino, it's just, it's an ugly movie. Like, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's I not, think, you know. I wouldn't, I, I, I feel, I don't want to go as far to say that it's not entirely deliberate. I think there is a, okay. there is an uncomfortable coldness about this movie. Like, yeah. you feel kind of gross and cold watching it. And I think, I yeah. don't know if that's entirely deliberate, but I know, I don't know if it's entirely by accident either. Okay. You know what I mean? Even, like, like the, the hotel rooms, like, those hotel rooms, man. Oh, they, they, they were just foul. so scummy. Um, <laughs> just so. And as if, oh, like, man, if, I, as if you're if getting I, it on in that pool. Don't, don't, oh, no, don't do anything in that pool. You are going to get so many, like, oh, diseases. So many, like, oh. skin diseases. There's got to be so much chlorine yeah. in that pool. 
Yeah, you go into that pool room, not even not the pool, the pool where the room where the pool is in, and you immediately get warts. Like, yeah. <laughs> you just immediately get warts. There's signs oh, everywhere saying, you yeah. know, make sure you are wearing, please wear thongs at all times. No bare feet. <laughs> We do not <laughs> accept way. any responsibility for shingles or <laughs> so, what's that so other one? The way out. What's that one that, <laughs> so uh, that the athletes get? Um, <laughs> what's that one? It's it's really it's not cool. It's like oh, I can't. What? That's that, the what's clap. That? <laughs> <laughs> you got the clap on the way out. <laughs> You just dip, it, I love- you dip one toe in, and suddenly, one toe oh in. yes, well Whoop, done. You've got the clap. you've got syphilis. Oh, fuck. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, but that's what it's like. Oh. No, but you're right. And, and, so even, maybe, and even with a naked chalice they're on in it, you're still like, oh, okay, yep, cool. We're yeah, doing you'd be kind of like, oh, can we not do it in here, though? Can we, <laughs> can we, can we, can we go somewhere can else? We go, let's go in that sauna. Oh, oh no, no, that's okay, even fine. worse. That's going to be worse. Someone left like a dirty <laughs> towel in there. You know, you just know you'd open oh. the door and there'd be like one crumpled up towel that someone's forgotten to take Jesus out of there. Jesus Christ. Like, oh, that's nasty. I don't know. Who yeah, that and for some to. reason, someone's someone's eaten like a two piece feed in there <laughs> and they've oh, left God. everything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, I, I love a two piece feed in the sauna. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> shit! <laughs> yeah. Two feet in the sauna. Yeah. Oh, that's messed up. Well, you know, look if you if this is the kind of hotel you're staying in, then look, you know, that's probably your choices for dinner. You're not really going much more glamorous than you know, that. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you're not having the clam chowder from the buffet because that's that's been sitting there for. Oh like yeah, six that's months. that's that's old. <laughs> Yeah. That's old Ooh, chowder. That's now. It is the bowl yeah. of chowder. Chowder. Oh, um, okay, God. That, I hope it up. was a directorial choice, though. Like, when I look back on it, I'm like, I hope it was a directorial choice. Like, because it looked, it was bad. Like, it looked bad. Yeah, but I think it was. Not bad as in it was filmed no, bad. No, no, no. As it looked in, ugly. It had an ugly yeah. aesthetic. I, I want, I'm yeah. with you 100%. And I, yeah, like I said, I don't know if it's entirely deliberate, but I know, mm-hmm. I, I think it's somewhere in between. I think they tried to make it cold. And yeah, it, it, with, with an with an idea that that would build atmosphere, and I but yeah. I think what it's done is it's taken it too far, and now you just feel kind of like, yeah, uh, you just kind of think it's ugly, um, yeah. and it doesn't, yeah. So it it kind of backfires a little bit on its choice, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you saying before that it looks like the director tried to be edgy. That's what tipped me off with the ugly. I made something. And it, and it yeah, didn't, yeah. didn't it, it, it didn't land as well. Yeah, I'd be really interested to. I've never seen Ronan, which was the film that mm-hmm. um, Frank and I made before this. I'd be yeah, really interested which, to watch that because I've heard that it's like the good version of what this yeah. is kind of trying to do. It's an edgy spy kind of noir with some really yeah. killer action sequences done much yeah. better. I, I people rave about Ronan. Um, I the car chases. If you watch. If you want to watch a movie with car chases, you watch Ronan. That's yeah. what I've been. That's what it's been billed as. Um, I was very drunk when I saw Ronan, okay. and I don't remember shit. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> yeah, I was very drunk, but um, yeah, I want to watch it again. It's always been on my list to. Yeah, I, I'd realised that um, I'd um the I, I felt bad because the I realised that the only Frank and I movie I'd seen before this was yep. the Island of Doctor Moreau. So yeah, which uh, wasn't really even his movie. He came in after Richard Stanley was fired and basically got told what to do by Marlon Brando and Val Kilmer, and right. <laughs> refused to work with Val Kilmer ever again. <laughs> And that's a great day. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't think I've given this guy uh, just you know he's due at all. Um, yeah. I, re- I really want to watch like the um, like the old Manchurian Candidate, and I've never seen the sequel to French Connection. That could be interesting as well that I saw he directed. Yeah, um, I haven't watched anything. I literally haven't watched any any of these. Well, there you go. So and but he, yeah. you can tell like there are certain elements of this where you, like, and I'm kind of. You know, contradicting myself, but the, every now and then, like I think yeah. the action sequences and just little moments here and there, you can see that he can be competently a competent director. And it's when he yeah. does, it's when he doesn't try to do too much. You know what I thought was actually relatively effective? The scene yeah. where he just had to try and get back to his hotel room, and you had Danny Trejo and the other yep. guy were both cornering in on him, and he had to yeah. just, he just had to, and that was classic. Those scenes, you know, those scenes where it's just yeah. 
That's just how it works. Someone's after you. Some, they don't know that they're after you yet. But yeah, yeah, they don't right know, but you know, and, you and you've got to get this thing, yep. and he's got to try and tear, and he gets the door open, and then they suddenly burst in, and he's faking that he hasn't moved, and his foot's still yep. tight. Great. Under, well done. Completely classic old school tension scene, and I thought it was done really well. It was all it was. the it was all the kind of edgy dialogue scenes where everything is kind of like. Did you notice that there was a lot of like what was in the background was an equal focus to what was in the foreground, except it wasn't like split diopter like De Palma style where it has that kind yeah. of furry bit in the middle. Yeah, it was like that. The depth of focus was massive. Because they could have, they literally would have dudes in the background of scenes at the same level of focus as the foreground. And I was like, that's that's really interesting. Mm. Um, So, yeah, it was, you know, I thought that there was some interesting choices made that probably do give him an opportunity to be, you know, a little, like he probably thought he was being a bit, you know, ambitious with some stuff. And maybe it just comes out as being, making him look like a bit of a... Like, if you didn't know he was a 70-year-old, yeah. you would never yeah. assume a 70-year-old man directed this movie. No, never in a million not. years. No, no. Absolutely not. Um, hey, so Ashton Kutcher turns up in this movie. I laughed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the thing. So, so with the Ashton Kutcher thing, with the, with, the, with the alcohol in the water pistol, like, it was so obvious what was going to happen. It was so blatantly obvious. So when and he, I was like, yeah, when oh, he that puts, that was funny. so obviously when he sees Ashton Kutcher with the same goatee yeah. and everything, you were like, oh, literally man, the same goatee. Yeah, he's going to do something. I think I, at first I was just a little bit overwhelmed with, hey, it's Ashton Kutcher. It's a Kutcher. <laughs> yeah, um, and I'm so sad he didn't get his his shit kicked out of him at some point. It would have been fun. <laughs> just, I mean, why not? It's always a bit fun to see yeah. Ashton cop it. Um, Absolutely. But the yeah the the alcohol and the water pistol thing because this is when the movie isn't like is so dumb that I yeah. I assumed that's what he did it for because when he got the water pistol I oh, really? I assumed that he saw the alcohol and went well that might come in I'm handy use this later. because yeah. I, if I can find a lighter or some matches I can do something with this but the movie yeah. seems to posit that the only reason he did it is so he can shoot alcohol into his mouth in his mouth yeah it seems Stupid like he idea. didn't realize until the very end that it was like <laughs> that, oh hang oh, on I've got I've got I'm- a flammable liquid in here. <laughs> I was like, no shit. Why else did you do it? Why didn't, like, you didn't want to just... You did it to get... Uh, uh, you did it so you could just shit. have a drink when you wanted to? I was waiting yeah, for somebody to pick it up as... I was... I swore... I swore someone was going to pick it up at some point thinking it's the booze well, one no, and because shoot it was a lot in the head. Of, yeah, because there was a lot of whose gun is this. Like, you know, when so guns many shots to the floor drawn, and, and everyone... So many times. Guns are on the floor and I'm like, how has no one picked up the water pistol at this point? How have we like, not had a moment with this? How is it the yeah. only time that we have that moment again... It's Ben Affleck it's picking it up, knowing that he's picked up the wrong one. Like he, picked, like yeah. the whole reason you do that, and you even have it's Chekhov's fake gun. It happened yeah. earlier where they thought where yeah. he thought he was going to get shot, and he just shot him with water. How has nobody's picked up the gun? One of the bad guys picked up the gun, gone to shoot him, and it's water, and he shoots it's him with a real gun. That's yeah. Come on, that's thriller writing one hundred and one. That's that's awesome. Come on, I'd watch that. I'd watch the shit out of that movie. Come on, man. No, instead he lights a cigarette, he flames him, which is... But this is we have to have... As if that's going to happen. Exactly, like, as if that's going to happen. How we have to have much this... fluid was on him? Like, they lit up in fire like that. He was like a, a So, and a that scarecrow. stuff has to be like 100 proof because... Yeah. Like, I don't know, it, it's not a thing. You can't, like... Yes, you not can you can fast, burn a though. shot, but can, it, you, yeah. like if you sp- you're just going to put out the cigarette. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. It's what's going to happen. And then yeah. he's going to be like, what the fuck did you just do to my cigarette? And shoot him. Yeah, and then shoot him, yeah. Yeah. He goes up like he's basically shooting him with kerosene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or he just did like a, a full bottle in his mouth and just went... Oh, all yeah, like one of those like, like, yeah. guys from like Fed Square. Flame throwing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> those dudes that walk out in the in the bloody red, there's red lights on Hoddle Street now. And they just... And just started bloody and like, throwing around oh, yeah. flaming stuff and you're like, yeah, here's my 30 cents that I had in my change drawer Yeah, for your Good death-defying you, axe. Exactly. By the way, half the country's on fire, you idiot. <laughs> Dude, dude, bad taste. Dude. Come yeah. on, have some tact. Oh, that's funny. Come um, on, man. All right, I don't. And, all right, what else do we need to talk about? Uh, I've got nothing until the end now. So yeah, I, okay. Because so, it was a decent, it was a decent action sequence, and I did like how, um, because I, 
I knew that Nick was coming back at one point. I just didn't know when it was going to be. I thought that's funny that, that maybe- yeah, I didn't. I had obviously no ideas. That's funny that you you were waiting for him to come back. Yeah. So I knew that. I thought that maybe Gary Sinise and him were in on it. I thought he would rock up, and all three of them would would rock uh, would ride off into the sunset and shoot Ben Affleck or do whatever. Right. Have him. Yeah. But no, and then Gary so, Sinise get cops it from Charlize. Is it Charlize that shoots him? Yeah, Charlize shoots him for no real reason because, like, yeah, he becomes very suspicious of her very quickly after a very simple mistake, like a very simple miscommunication. Like, it's yeah. not like he, it's, you know, the fact it's not, that yeah, it's he not, it's, yeah. <laughs> believes Ben Affleck. Undoubtedly, yeah. With, before he go because as if he wouldn't say, oh, I never told you that. She'd go, yes, you did, you dumb shit. You say a lot of stuff in your sleep or a lot of stuff when you're really tired or after we've just banged. And you'd expect Gary Sinise to just go, yeah, yeah. I I obviously trust her first. Yeah. No, no. He trusts Ben Affleck for some reason. He's like, what's he talking about? What do you mean? (laughs) How did you know he died? It's like, well, I mean, mean, they they talk. Like, lots of conversations have been had. He's been trying to tell her the whole bloody movie that it's not, you know, that he's not the guy, that the guy actually died. I love yeah. how many times he goes from, it's not me, okay, it is me. Oh, it's not me. Okay, it's okay, not it me. Is me. Okay, it is me. No, it's not me. Oh. Okay, it is me. And you were over it with the first one. Oh, like the other, yeah. I was so glad to see where this movie was going to go with him not being the guy and them <laughs> yeah. saying, well, you're in it now. So Yeah. And better- I was like, good. Good. Let's, yeah. get, let's continue, shall no, we? Come no. on. Because they're just all so dumb because it's like, of course he's not the guy. <laughs> Listen to the way he says, yes, I am the guy, to the way he says, I'm not the guy. There is desperation in his voice when he's talking about him being not the guy. There yeah. is there's this honest desperation that he does not want to die. And when yeah. he's pretending to be Nick. Doesn't even want to be a part of it, like seriously. It's like his eyes are darting everywhere. He's talking about made up bloody renovations yeah. that happened, that took place. <laughs> And I mean, as if you wouldn't be like, oh, this guy's full of shit. He's trying to run away like 14 times. I oh, know. He's clearly not the guy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not as if, like, he was in prison. It's not as if, oh, he's maybe Nick's a little scared of guns or maybe we intimidate him with all of our goons. No, no, no. It's just not him. I think just Gary Sinise is just real dumb. I think, I think this movie doesn't really illustrate enough just how dumb him and his cronies are. I get that they try. Yeah. Maybe they needed to try harder. You need to be a little bit, yeah, a little bit, a little bit dumber to, to pull it off. Just a bit, just a bit. So in that, uh, Gary Sinise gets shot a couple of times. Yeah, Nick rocks up. They flood the car with fuel and a couple of dollar bills, and go dollar to dollar send bills, him off. Y'all. A couple of dollar bills, yeah, and go to send him off off the cliff, uh, Thelma and Louise style. Yeah, but so, there's, so there's no evidence. Yeah, but and this was and I was kind of. Because of all that, because of everything that's been done, even though I don't know, by the end of it, I was I was siding with with Ben Affleck, and when Charlie's died and what Nick died, I was like, yes, die! Like I literally was, I was so for it for some reason. I have no idea why though. I was, uh, no, like, I was, yes, I was pretty happy. Go, I was pretty happy for him to to be done with. I think because yeah. by that point, I was so overwhelmed by how much scaffolding this movie required to make this plot work that I was just like, just kill them. Just have it done. Just kill them. Get it done. Exactly. I love how he says, rule number one, never put a, you know, never give a, put a, a car thief, <laughs> car thief in, a car. in a car. I'm like, when were we, when, when were we talking rules? When, like, <laughs> that's one of those lines of dialogue that me, that kind of is a throwback. Do you know what I mean? But there's no, yeah, he's yeah. not throwing back to, they've there's never no... talked about any kind of rules at any point. No. Um, but yeah, I do think yeah. that's pretty dumb. They really shouldn't have put him in a car. I also don't understand because they, and they use the line of dialogue twice. So apparently it's important. They say yeah. that there needs to be as many dead bodies as Santa Claus suits because of the yeah, witnesses. Yeah, they said that five times. So, Why and did they, they even that? did it like she has a dead voiceover. Mm. And I expected. And the, and the aerial shots of all the Santas at the yeah. start and at the end. So of the I movie. expected him to take off his Santa suit and throw it down in the ravine. And so it's like, oh, he's the other There's Santa. The other There's Santa. The, they're all there and accounted for. But no, he just no. walks off. And then. In the Santa suit. In the Santa suit. P.S. And this is where the movie. Like, okay, so. <laughs> yes. There's some twists. It's all ridiculous. Go on. Go on. This last five minutes of this movie. <laughs> I lost my shit. This is not this movie. It doesn't belong in this movie. No, it what doesn't are we belong doing? In this movie. 
You're like, are you kidding me? That's what's going to happen? So Ben Affleck walks off with two sackfuls of money. He's just gotten away with it. it they're going to be planted on the people that have died there. He could literally get away with it if he wanted to. Yeah. And what does he do? He takes not a couple of bills. He takes what looks to be like at least 10, yeah, probably 10 or grand 20 wads. grand yeah. wads and putting them in people's letterboxes. Like, now, I think this is a terrible idea because... On his way home. He's walking home. He's, he's just putting them in the letterboxes yeah. and smiling. He's basically going to get caught now. Like, yeah. I mean, he, he could know. have potentially just gotten those two bags of cash and stuck him in yep. his mattress and lived yep. a comfortable life. Just don't go and buy any stupid big cars exactly. or anything or big no, houses. That's right. go don't to, draw any attention to, to yourself. You know, maybe go to Mexico, exactly. you know, and you can live a really comfortable life and all be fine. Instead, he's exactly. actually going to get arrested because <laughs> you cannot guarantee that not at least one of these people is going to ring the police and say, ah, oh, uh, a, a wad of cash. Ten ca-. Like, because th- there are people like, that will do it and then will. they will go, ah, oh. and then everybody will go, oh, we all got one. We what, all got one. What street are we on? Oh, we're on this street. Oh, who just turned up in this street? Oh, this oh, guy who was just on parole, guy. who also ha- actually hasn't... He got released from prison six weeks ago, hasn't been seen for six weeks, turns up today. Uh, did, it, did someone say they saw a guy in a Santa suit? Yeah, Santa okay. suit? Santa, uh, yeah, I was, having a, he, I, was having a, I was having a cigarette out the front. I saw him. Yeah. I saw him. And, uh, yeah, oh, okay. there was a robbery of about this amount of money of a bunch of guys in Santa suits. Uh, you'll yeah, come, yeah, you'll come with us. Yeah, Yeah. Oh, the the tomahawk. Tomahawk. Oh, you knew the guy that used to work... Right. That's okay. interesting. With the guy that used to work security, we found him at the bottom. He was your flat. He was your cellmate. Right, oh, your yeah. Cellmate. Okay. Could you? Yeah. Could you come with us? For a you're you're going to have to come with us. Like I'm no yeah. detective, but I reckon that that's pretty much the way yeah, they exactly. would put it together. Yeah, I work security at Kmart. Could you come with me for a minute? <laughs> I've got this covered. It's like Paul Blart could have figured this out. Um, so, and then. <laughs> Then they cut yeah. to a shot of him, so he gets home, and it oh, repeats the thing where all he worst. wants to do is have dinner. This is the worst. He doesn't go have a shower. He doesn't uh-huh. go, you know, like clean himself up a little bit. Blood soaked fucking still, Santa suit. Still in the blood soaked Santa suit. Still oh. dirty from month. You know, however long it's been since a shower. It's one of those movies where you, I it I would hazard a guess it's been at least four or five days since anyone's had a shower. Exactly. Um, <laughs> just sits down and has his Christmas lunch. How is he? Right. Like, how did they not have enough time? in the shooting schedule to change him out of the fucking Santa suit for that <laughs> shot of him having dinner. I because can't. why would you need him in it? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It makes zero sense. Oh. It makes abs- – the first thing you would do when you walk in that house is, hey, I'm, I'm back. Yeah, Dad, it's really great to What's see up? you. I'm yeah. going to clean myself up and then I'll be down and we'll have a chat. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Son, why are you in a Santa suit? Don't ask too many questions. I'm going to burn this out the back. <laughs> I'm going to burn it. <laughs> um, just, don't, just don't ask any questions. Probably best. And you then, don't know. and I'll tell you what, we talk a lot. Yep. Alan Silvestri, one of the all-time greats, th- amazing. Whatever he's doing in this Mr. movie Mr. is garbage. Back to the future. Um, yeah. It's all horrible. of a sudden, this this cue kicks in. Like I'm watching a Hallmark Christmas movie. Like yeah. and Home Alone, Home Alone Five. Yeah, it's like when the old man and Macaulay Culkin are looking at each other out the window, waving. It's this music <laughs> cue kicks in, and Ben Affleck's like, "Yeah, maybe I don't mind the holidays that much." And then the and credits like, roll. The while we've got fuck? this. Like do 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 kind of the thing. The worst. The I, worst. I was um, my. I just did not understand what I was saying. Yeah, and you know what's funny? When we, you know, how, like I, I, I kind of wait for a moment when you're writing notes for a movie that we're doing the podcast for, right? Mm. I'll wait for a certain uh, point in the film where I go, oh, okay, now I've got a bit to write about. Pause or do whatever. Write a bit down. I had so much to say until that last three minutes of the movie, that music hit and I forgot everything that I wanted to say. <laughs> that's kind of, yeah, that's, like, that's the way it the goes. Fuck? I was, I, like, I was what just happened? completely overwhelmed, gobsmacked <laughs> that that's, that was the last two minutes of this movie. Do you know what? I, in Randy. my head, I was so ready. Yeah. Cause you know how it, it did the thing where it, the, the opening shot was the Santa's all like, Yep. Burnt up lying, and shot and lying up. dead. Yep. And there was yep. one that you assume was Ben Affleck. Yep. I was sure that what it was going to be was when they replayed that shot, that mm-hmm. when the person rolled over, it would it would be the other guy. Gary, it would be Nick. Gary Sinise, stay up, still alive. Oh, no, yep, it would be yep. Nick in the Santa suit and Ben Affleck would, like, dead, and Ben Affleck would just be cruising away with cash in, a, in normal clothes. I was sure, and that would be the end of the movie. Yeah. 
because it seems so weird to me. Because otherwise, that the reason why that because usually when a movie starts with the shot that is the end shot, mm. usually by seeing it at the end, you come at it from a different angle. And so, yes. what you suspect hap- is the reason why it happened at the beginning is not actually what is happening at the end. Yes. That is not the case in this movie. It's actually just happening the way you think it happened at the start. You see a bunch of dead Santas and you go, oh, well, that's everybody. That's, oh, that's... That's our main cast, yeah. basically, of bad guys. And yes, that's just what it ends up being at the end. And the one that we see last is Ben Affleck. What a waste of fucking time that shot was. Like, yeah, but really? It's, I mean, it's that thing. Do you know what uh, we talked about? It's, it's the alias thing. And nearly, nearly every episode of Alias started that way. Yeah. With, uh, oh, really? It's the J.J. Abrams. Um, uh, yeah, with some kind of really exciting don't you thing love happening. Alias? Yeah, I love, you love Alias. Alias. I love it. Oh. But that oh. I get a bit sick of that trope. It's Mission Impossible okay. 3 as well. It is Mission Impossible 3. And Mission yeah. Impossible 3 oh, does it on. really well because that. that's it. You it think changes it. It completely yeah. changes the context because when we get to it in the context of the movie, it's in a different, complete, a completely different scenario because someone else is wearing the mask. The start scene, <laughs> probably the best start scene of any movie, Mission Impossible 3. That's great. We've Jeez. done an episode on that, haven't we? Nice. That was intense. Yeah, we did. Yeah, good. That was the first time I watched that. Oh, my God. Edge of the seat stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, God. Of, Why did we with... watch Reindeer Games? Fuck me. I don't know. We're struggling to find these. Because um, <laughs> it's Christmas. Christmas no. I will. Okay, here we go. We have shat all over this movie, but I will say one thing. There is a lot of Christmas content in this film. There is. We haven't this really paid much attention to it, but there's this plenty of Christmas carols. Christmas they, they're in it's Santa lovely. suits for a big bunch of it. There's yeah, Christmas, there's Christmas trees. trees, there's presents. Yep. They talk about drinking. They're talking about what they'd like to do at Christmas. Getting drunk on eggnog. Was, exactly. There was a lot of Christmas content. Yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, I'll pay that. We've got a, There is Christmas content to be had. Congratulations, to be had. Reindeer Games. Well done, Reindeer Games. Nick, <coughs> should we Tyson. move on? Well, let's just say, lastly, do you recommend Reindeer Games? Would you watch it again? I would, I would definitely tell someone not to watch it. I Actually, no. If I was running a film school, I'd maybe chuck Reindeer Games in there just to see what students who are, or people who are studying film think about this and what they take away from it. Because they'll find some third or, sec- or fourth meaning that I have no idea that I never saw. Yeah. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. I think, the, I I think you're probably not wrong there. I think there's some things worth exploring in its filmmaking. I think yeah. it's a bit of a it's – a, it's a bit of a um, – like you could show this to, um, okay. Thank you. you could show this to like, um, uh, young screenwriters and say on the surface, this might appear to be a well-constructed movie, but can you tell me why it doesn't entirely work? Exactly. What is, what is missing? What would you do? How would you like get this script out now, now make it better. Exactly. How would you make it better? How would you make it better? Yeah, because you could. This this movie could have been really good. That's the thing. I reckon this is like what I talked about last week with Jingle All the Way. The concept oh, is not terrible. I think there is a movie in this. There is a movie no. in a guy who gets out of prison, pretends to be the guy that he was bunking with in order to be yeah. with the girl, and ends up in yeah. way over his head. There is a movie yeah. in that. There is. Yeah. It's there, not this there, movie. I don't, I don't believe you that there's a movie in Jingle All the Way, but I do believe that there is a movie. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, Reindeer Games 2, does that exist? No, it doesn't. I'm pretty glad it doesn't. Director's okay. Cut Reindeer's ga- Reindeer Games. What do you reckon? I didn't see it. I, I watched the theatrical version, Me too. I'm pretty sure, because the, the, if the director's cut has 20 extra minutes. 20, not three, 20. So too that's, long. It's too look, long. That's... No, come on. That's legitimately changing the movie. I kind of stand by if you're going to do a director's cut that's going to change the film. Um, I know Blade Runner is the main one to go to, but um, for me, hilariously enough, Daredevil, the shitty Ben Affleck movie, Mm. changed completely with the director's cut. It had a bit more depth to it. Not much, but it had some. You know, so I don't know. I'd I'd be – am I interested? Hell no. Will I watch it? Definitely not. No, I'll never watch Um, the director's cut. (laughs) I may, I never do it, but maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll YouTube the difference. I, t- I tried to find a comparison on YouTube. There, there was not one. Nothing. No, I found a no website that outlined no one gives a, yeah. the differences. Yeah, and they, it, it actually doesn't seem like much. It seems like it's a majority character-based stuff, like con- seriously conversations between characters. Oh, okay, well that could help, but it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change anything. No. Um, All right, let's move Tyson? on, Nick. Randy gave sucked. Hey man, <laughs> what did you watch what this did week? You watch this week? Did, did it? Did it? Yeah. Um, um, 
I'll go first you, because you go first. I there's only one thing I want to talk about this week. Um, oh sure, go. And it's not even something that I got all the way through. It is something oh, that damn. I'm currently still trying to finish after two sittings because I now just you, need to finish it so that I can k- just get it done. You've watched the Irishman, haven't you, Tyson? No. Oh fuck. Okay. This is yeah. uh, Six Underground, the Michael Bay oh, directed, fuck. Ryan Reynolds starred. Ryan Reynolds. Uh, why? Why are you watching this? Because I started watching it, and because I was just like, <laughs> "Oh, look, it could be fun." I was in the mood for dumb action. Yeah, I I cannot tell you how ridiculously awfully made this movie is, but I can't stop. Yep. I can't stop. I've got to get to the end of it. Yeah, all I'm trying to do now is just get to the end of it. Just, <laughs> just to kind of, I just need to complete it in my brain. So that it's done and it's put aside. It's so funny because it's not a movie, like, sometimes there are movies that I'll stop and just be like, no, I, n- I don't ever need to revisit that. I feel like I yeah. need to just, I just need to get this done and just see release it. how bad it can get. <laughs> is it bad? It's it's so bad. Is it, ra- is it Reindeer Games bad, though? No, because Reindeer Games is bad for, in, cause for different reasons. This is bad okay. because it is just, it is a movie <laughs> that feels like it was made. In like 2007, I want to say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like it. It feels like the kind of action movie that I thought we were well beyond. Like okay. those action movies where so there's like freeze frames on characters with their with their like character name in an, oh, cuts in a slow mo yeah. and then cuts back in and there's <laughs> like there's like funny violence where there's like sequences with an eyeball and oh, everyone's yeah. like ooh. While they're in a speeding car, and there's like tough chicks who, you know, it's like I don't. Basically, I don't have time to bleed. From you know, it's lines like that. Yeah, um, yeah. And everybody's, and you know, people, you know, there's sexy things happening between certain characters, and one of them's like a, <laughs> one of them's like a dumb Russian guy or something, and yeah. there's a guy that does parkour. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a riot. I am. Oh in. God! And it's what is it called? Underground. What is it? Six, six underground. Six underground. Seven. And six this movie, it, it like the first. So I've watched probably. I think it, it's it's because it's Michael Bay. It goes for like over two hours. I oh, I've watched about an hour and ten minutes. And yep. I at up to this point, I think I'm still in a flashback, but I'm not sure because oh, that's God. how like the structure is it starts at a point and then it goes six weeks previously. Then it goes from there, three weeks later. Then it goes present day. Then it goes two months earlier. And I was just like- Are you serious? Hang on. So, what time is it? Exactly. Oh, God. Um, That's horrible. And then it has the goal to try and have, like, emotional scenes where they're kind of- because they all have numbers instead of names and they're talking about, you know, why don't we know each other? Why aren't we- we're, you know, we're putting our lives on the line for each other. We should be friends. We should know each other's names and- I don't. <laughs> I just don't care. Um, so yeah, I just want to get through. Wow. I just want to get through it because it's going to be my least favorite movie of the year by far. <laughs> I just want to get it done. <laughs> but Ryan Reynolds is my boyfriend. I have to watch it. I and now we like I, I look at it and I'm like, I'm, I'm never going to watch this. I'm never, ever, ever going to watch this. No. Jesus. Okay. I'd nice almost, one. I'd almost recommend it though for the hilarity. Oh really? Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, Nick, what did you watch? Ty, so I watched uh, X Men Dark Phoenix. Ah, very good. Yeah, um, I, I look. It wasn't. It's. It wasn't a bad film. Okay, um, but it was the most dullest one of the of the X Men series. Like essentially, it's not, yeah. Where I do you know I mean? So on it. like, if it's if it's not like in the spectrum of things, if if a movie is good, that's great. If a movie is bad, like really bad, you can still kind of enjoy it, a la Rainy Games. Um, but if a movie is just mediocre, I find that so fucking frustrating and just a waste of time. And that's what I kind of felt Dark Phoenix was because they weren't doing anything different. Like Gene was still kind of, oh, I can't control my powers. I can, I can't, I can, I can't. Charles was doing this thing of Gene, I can help you, which is the same thing we saw in Last Stand. Scott was, you know, trying to get his girl back. Like it was essentially all the same stuff. Like, and it just wasn't, there wasn't, it's not like there was an action sequence where I was like, Jesus, that was intense, you know? And it's not, and it's not of the emotional level of something like Logan, where you were like, Jesus, this is not a superhero movie. Anymore. This is like, Lo- Logan was so good because the superhero part of the movie was secondary. It had that, that was, that was a secondary, secondary element of that movie. It was yes. more about the emotional side and what was happening with yeah, relationships. Absolutely. Whereas, whereas this, uh, I was like, okay, 
you know, I was just, I was just bored. And yeah, I just, look, yeah, it was, it was upsetting. I kind of, I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't end up coming down as harshly on it because I still, <clears throat> I, I think it was just so uh, uneventful in the grand scheme of things. That was the disappointing yeah. thing for me. I think there's some really good stuff in it. Like, yeah. but I, like I said, I feel like it, I, I think I equated it to like a really good season finale of like the third sure. season of a TV show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where a lot yeah. happens to advance character development, but it's yeah. not the big whiz bang finale after the, all these years that we've been, yeah. that we wanted this m- movie wanted, to be. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It feels yeah. like the kind of, yeah, the second chapter of, or the third chapter of a five movie series. Yeah, it's, it's, exactly. It's so you're catching expecting fire something to, part one or whatever. Yeah, you know. you're, you're expecting something to happen afterwards. Yes. You know. Yeah. yeah but, even though, like, this is meant to be kind of one of the ultimate X-Men stories, it, 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 is, it yeah. actually felt like, yeah, it felt like kind of like a side note to something else. Whereas, you know, you look yeah. at something like Logan, which felt like a very self-contained story, yeah. actually summed up the entirety of the franchise it very, did, yeah. very well. And would have been a far nicer way for it all just to kind of come to a head. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, and even something like Apocalypse, which, you know, like we talk about this all the time, nobody likes Apocalypse mm. except me. That, yeah. <laughs> that felt like the stakes were higher than this. Yeah, way, way higher. Yeah. Yeah. Even like, and that's why I, get, I, I wish they just had left it at, at Days of Future's Past. Like it wasn't. it wasn't the best. It was good. It was a lot Days better of Future's than Past this. Past is a great, really great. Um, crossing over of both of the the timelines, yeah. so we so we get to have that kind of that fun. Hey, we get our Professor Xavier, we get um, you know, we get our Patrick Stewart, and we get our James McAvoy, we get our yeah. McKellen and Fassbender, and we get everybody kind of yeah. playing in the same pool. Isn't this fun? Yep, yep. <coughs> Coming then, to a head, like finish it off. It could have been great. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Look, I see. Yeah. So yeah, I I I I kind of yeah, I came down on it kind of probably a little bit less. Like a little bit kinder than I think a lot of people were on it, but I don't think we're yeah. extremely dissimilar opinions. I think it just that doesn't make me as frustrated as I think it's made you. <laughs> like, no, it's, I'm not as frustrated. I was just, I was, just, I was just neither here nor there. It didn't, it didn't matter to me. I was like, oh yeah, okay, sure, cool. I found parts yeah. of it engaging. I think there was some, yeah. Every now and then, I was like, you know what, that's a pretty good scene. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah. I was in it, but I wish it had have been more impactful. I think. Yeah, I think yeah, I I was would have been quite happy with it if it was like just a yeah a side story, and knowing that there was going to be something, you know what I mean? If this mm. was the Ant Man and the Wasp, yeah, and I was waiting for Endgame Part Two, if this Endgame, you know yeah hundred percent, I would be yeah. totally fine with it. I would have been like yeah, that yeah. was cool. That was a nice little side nice story war- that gets us up. to our yeah. warm up to our big finale. Unfortunately, yeah. that was the big finale. So that was the big finale. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, well, there what? were just so many. There were just so many things in it that I, that I was like, "Really, you're still doing this?" Like the fact that um, Mystique was still um, kind of biting the bit at Charles. They were still kind of finding. I was like, "Oh, haven't we done this? Have we not done this?" Oh yeah, we're, already? we're then, going around in circles yeah, for a lot of this film. Yeah. yeah, you know. So it was the kind of the same things, and I was like, "Yeah, we've, I've I've seen this movie, actually." So yeah, I'll see it later. We needed yeah. new, <laughs> yeah. We needed new things to get kind of to new areas of conflict for our characters. There was actually, yeah. I liked the one, the bits between Hank and Xavier when they were trying to accept, yep. like, uh, you know, and said, yeah. maybe, you know, Xavier, you don't have all the answers. You're, you know, it's not, it shouldn't be your way or the highway. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. And that's why I kind of, I really wanted a lot more of what the hell, whatever the hell Magneto was doing. I was like, what is this? Oh, yeah, what he's a little, he's little hippie of, commune. Yeah. I was like, what are we doing here? This is awesome. Yeah. You know? And yeah, we got I got nothing of it, and I was like, oh, and 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 then because uh, Eric found out that uh, Jean killed Mystique, and they were like, oh well, she, I have to kill her now. I was yeah. like, well, 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 hang on a minute, hang on, we don't really know the full story here. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, no, okay, a lot okay, of I guess decisions. We learned, are I guess we no- Yeah, I guess we learned nothing from um, uh, first class, huh? No, okay, that's cool. it. Lots yeah. of rash decisions were made in this movie. Yeah, right. Oh, very mm. good. Tyson, yes, uh, I think Rainy Games will go down as probably one of the funniest episodes we've done. Yeah, right. Well, it did have possibly I, I, my I, favourite I, laugh of all time, <laughs> but I don't know if on the whole it's going to be the funniest. But it yeah. does have my yeah, it definitely has my favourite laugh, my of, favorite laugh of our 122 episodes. <laughs> that was good. Two piece oh, feet God. in the sauna. Two piece feet. Is... <laughs> I have to listen to this episode. It's my favourite thing. 
Um, mm. But I think that's going to wrap us, Nicholas. Yeah, Tice. Um, Next week is our uh, season finale. It is. It is. So yeah. it, um, there's a possibility this might come after Christmas, Nick. We're going to have to see. We're going to have to oh, look at right. our calendars and see how what we can do. But I think oh, I don't yeah. think it's going to be as easy as we think. Oh um, shit. But, okay. So there's a possibility that our Christmas special might come the day after Christmas, but we'll see how we go. And that's all right. A Boxing Day special. Maybe I it's like a Boxing it. Day special. Um, I like but it. yeah, we'll be our season finale for um, you know 2019. We'll be taking a short, yeah. uh, uh, you know, a slightly extended break after. We will. We, but uh, we won't be gone for too long at all, and we might even have some exciting little bonus material for you to yeah. devour. In I like our, that. In our uh, downtime. In our off-season. Um, yeah. But yes, for our last episode of the year, Nick, what are we doing? Why don't you tell the people what we're doing? Uh, we are doing we are doing a full-blown Christmas movie. Well, that's it what we Christmas- like to do at the end of the year. Yeah. We like to do a we full-blown like to make it Exactly. We like to make sure. And, and there's nothing more comforting and very much Nick Tyson videotape is uh, Muppet's Christmas Carol. Yes. Yeah. Possibly my it's favorite version of this story. Uh, oh, really? I do love. I, I just. I've always loved a Christmas Carol. Just on a on the whole, I think it's fascinating. Whole, I'll yeah. watch any version, yep. and we may be about to be talking about my favorite version. So nice. I like it. <laughs> this yeah. is. Uh, it's going to so, be very exciting. Um, but so Nick, yeah. before we uh, log off, why don't you tell the people they can find mm-hmm. our show one more time? Oh well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining in. On if you if if you randomly looked us up on the internet, you looked up. Has anyone done a podcast on reindeer games? And you landed on this. Thank you. Thank you for getting to the end. Uh, we <laughs> hope you we hope you like, subscribe, rate, review, all of that stuff. If you wish to, please do so on uh, on uh, Apple Podcasts. We would love you muchly. We would. Other than that, we, we are on would. all the all the social medias, which is Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, we are on Letterboxd as well. So if you if you care to follow what Tyson and myself are watching in the off season, um, if you would like to know that, you can follow us on Letterboxd. Tyson is uh, T Y S underscore videotape, and I am N I C underscore videotape. Um, yeah. Other than that, Jesus, reindeer games, <laughs> reindeer games, <laughs> reindeer games, reindeer games. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was good. I liked it. Yeah. Tyson. Yes, Nick. I'll see you next week. Buddy. See you next week, bud.